Welcome back to Practical 365. I'm Steve Goodman, and this is the last part in deploying IoT with Microsoft Teams and the Power Platform. Yes, in just three videos, we've managed to get an understanding of why we do this, how we do this, and we've connected an actual device to Azure. We've done everything we need to. And in this last part, we're going to get that into Microsoft Teams and the Power Platform. And it's so easy. It's very, very simple. All you need to know is what buttons to press and what order. And then you can take your skills in the Power Platform, in Microsoft Teams, Power Automate, and do as you like. This is where, after you've watched this video, you can see how you can be creative with the stuff that's coming in. Because we've got that glue. We've managed to bring the data in very, very quickly into Teams and do stuff with it. So we looked at our model, which is IoT Central. We've got that there set up. And now inside IoT Central, we've got the device provisioned and sending us data. Now, what I've done to give us some more stuff we can use, really, is I've added in some additional devices. I've added in some simulated devices. That's great because you might want to actually use this anyway. There's a digital twin concept in IoT in Azure where we might want to simulate all the data that's coming across, and do modeling on it, all sorts of interesting things. For our purposes, then it's very useful to have multiple data feeds coming in as well as our real one so that we can build dashboards, so we can set triggers, so we can see what the volume of data is going to look like. So we know that we're actually going to build a solution that, that whilst with one device alerted once a day, with a thousand devices is just going to be unmanageable or it's too slow or it doesn't work the right way. Now, to do all of this, what we need is to set up, well, we've got two options. We've got data export. Now, if you want to send that data into Azure, and this is where we might want to store it for the long term if it needs to be kept. You know, There's always that case where if you weren't, weren't doing it today and you were just collecting that data with a paper-based form and things went wrong, then that is not that bad. It costs money. But once you start collecting that data and recording it, then you may have compliance reasons to keep it for longer than you might want to keep it or with a different life cycle to the team that we're bringing the data into because a team's life cycle might not be the same as this data, right? So we could send that data to Azure Blob Storage. We could send it to Data Explorer as effectively a relational database where we can do interesting things with it as well. But for this, well, I've got that there. I've, I've set it up, but if I've disabled it, I'm going to instead set up a set of rules. And I'm going to have two core rules for this because it's going to be some, a temperature monitoring system um, that is going to, first of all, it's going to send the te temperature data over to Microsoft Teams. And I keep saying Microsoft Teams because I mean Dataverse in Microsoft Teams. That's the destination. It's not going to live outside of there. The life cycle of this data will be inside that team, right? So I've got those two rules that I've set up, and you can see that on the screen there, where I've set one up with a trigger that whenever it is minus 1,000, something the temperature never will be, then it's always going to send that data across. So it's always going to trigger and push that through. That means that I could use that as my sole way of pushing the data across, or I can have a threshold where I'm only going to send triggers across when a threshold is exceeded because that might be the value case it's not about physically recording the temperature it's just that when it exceeds something go and do actions to get going with this once it gets to the other side though you'll notice i didn't set any triggers on those rules i just set the rule up the rule will trigger when the threshold is exceeded that that doesn't happen yet the, the power to make bit doesn't happen yet that pulling the data we're going to do that from the other side inside Teams. Now, we've got to do some things first before we can do that, though. First of all, we need to be able to create Dataverse inside our team. So to do that, I'm going to create a Power App. And this Power App, it, I, it doesn't actually have to do anything. If it is all about just those thresholds and then it's going to be Power Automate that will do something, then you might not even need to build a basic app. But for our purposes, once this app is ready uh, and it takes a little while to, to sort itself out, so when that's done and that's there, hobble along, I'll go back into the app itself and I've got my monitoring app that I've created. And this monitoring app uh, is really the 
it's really a app in Teams, power app in Teams, that is going to give me access and an environment attached to the team that I can create a Dataverse table. Because I could use a Microsoft list, but I'm not going to. I'm going to use Dataverse because that's a good place to store this type of data in comparison to somewhere else. Now, you might want to, especially if it's setting a lot of data, you might want to clean this data up. You might want all sorts of rules that sit around this. And you might want to have an interface where people can then have actions that come from this. You could do all sorts of things on top of it. Fundamentally, though, I just want to get the name of the device. I want to get when it happened. So when the trigger was was set and sent across, when it was recorded. Uh, and I want to get that temperature itself, the decimal value that's going to come across that I can then do things with. But for... For, for the sake of, of, well, we've got the power up there, we may as well do something with it, then I'm going to put a data pane in that's just going to show the data that's coming through. So a bit like if you were not a Dataverse expert, then a bit like a, a Microsoft list. It's just going to have the data flowing through. We can scroll down. We can, of course, do things to just sort the data in there if we want to. But what we really, really want to do is just get the data in. So I've, I've set that up. I've published the application itself. So we've got our tables. We've got um, a page that's going to show as a tab in Teams. We've got a basic Power App. And once that's over in Teams, we've got our next step, which is Power Automate. And this is where the magic happens. So Power Automate is now going to connect to our rule in IoT Central. Now, there's various ways of getting the data into Power Automate. One of those could be to call a webhook from the rule side, where the rule in IoT Central or something else, and that could be a custom app, then triggers Power Automate based on pulling a or accessing a webhook. It sends perhaps some JSON data with the device name, time it was recorded, temperature, monitor, and then we could do things with it just like that. However, we're going to keep it simple because this is something that we want it to be maintainable. We want to make use of things that already exist and we want to do it in a secure manner. Now, what I have to do when I do this in Power Automate is to get into the right environment where my Dataverse table is. What I must do is go and open this up from Teams in a web browser and then I'll drop down from Environments and then I'll pick that team that I've created my power app in with my dataverse that means that when i go and create my flow i can then connect to iot central but then i can also create, connect to my dataverse and by connecting to my dataverse in my team then i get to make use of the dataverse in teams within the teams licensing that's the thing that we want to do that is going to make sure that this has a cost model that fits into the the thing that you've already bought from microsoft right so we're going to create a new automated cloud flow and I'm going to choose when a rule is fired in Azure IoT Central V3 and I'll sign in. And this is where I've used the same account. Then I can pick the application name and then I've got my two rules that I've created and I can pick telemetry. Now I'll then create a next step. So here I'm going to then connect to the Microsoft Dataverse and this is it. <gasps> I just add a new row. So I pick my table. I obviously picked data types that go with it, that decimal type to match my temperature reading that's going to come across. And scroll down, I'll find my monitoring table and I'll click advanced options. And then I can then pick the action, uh, sorry, the device name. And then I can pick the time it was created, the webhooks timestamp that's sent across. And I can also pick the reading that's being sent by the rule, the temperature. Now, within moments effectively the data is going to flow into dataverse that my friends is it that's effectively all we actually needed to do to get that across what we'll now see inside that table is the data itself now i did say because of the time that we got i'm going to show you the bits that are going to allow you to take the next step so if you want to then go and create another one that is triggered based on that threshold and then 
maybe create an adaptive card or use Power Virtual Agent. Or perhaps this is the point where you use a connector to your CRM system or perhaps an ERP or, or log a service ticket. Th this is where you'll be able to do that. If you want to be able to then just create rules that go based on what happens when the data is in the dataverse, or you want to provide an interface in Power Apps to the data that's recorded, or you want to create a Power BI dashboard that connects to that data in the dataverse and exposes it so you can see it. This is where you can build on it. So all of your Microsoft 365 and Power Platform skills begin at this point where we brought the data in, that data is being fed in as we speak, and then it is for you to do all of the stuff next. So that is how we brought all that into Teams, right? Very, very simple. That was, in effect, setting up a new application, deploying the right firmware, configuring a device to send data into IoT Central, creating a rule that triggers and sends the data across, and then picking that up with Power Automate using connectors from Microsoft that connect in a secure way to IoT Central, and then when the rule is fired, the flow starts, and then we place that data into Dataverse, into an existing team that will bring the data to the people that, that want to action based on what, what's happened there, or view the data, or will find that recording useful. So stay tuned for more videos on Practical 365, and of course, subscribe. And if you've liked this, let me know in the comments. It has been a pleasure as always.